Um, all right. So Tom wants to know, uh, could I explain what an IGENIX test result means? And I think, Tom, what you mean is the Western blot. And so I want to go ahead and describe that to you. And to do that, I'm going to show you a slide uh, from, um, you're going to see it on the center of your screen. I'm going to pull it up. So this is an IGM Western blot. I'm circling the IGM right there. Okay. All right. And, um, and this was for a, a patient that, again, I've, ca I've cut their name off. There also is something called an IgG Western blot. Okay, so what a Western blot is, is it is a method we use to see if your immune system has developed antibodies against proteins found in the covering of the Lyme germ. And we look to see if you've developed antibodies from two families. One is this IgM family. And if we had a second page here, we'd see the results from a separate a family of antibodies called IgG. Okay, All right. So um, let's see about getting rid of these. All right. So okay. So now the second part that I want to show you here is that how you interpret this. Okay. So I'm drawing a line down the middle here. This side over here, you see all these numbers. What these numbers are? These are the weights of proteins that are found on the covering of the Lyme germ. So there is a protein that weighs 18 kilodaltons. That's what that stands for right there, okay, a kilodalton. And then um, this side over here, this second side that I'm circling now, says, did this person have an antibody against that protein? So for instance, this line right here, this 2325, this person has antibodies against the protein 2325. That's what the, the pluses mean. And also here at this position 30, there is a plus, meaning the person has antibodies against this protein 30, for instance, okay? Now, here's how we interpret these. We say that a test is positive if you have antibodies against two of six double star proteins, okay? So there's one there, the 31, 34, 39, 41, and 8393 proteins. Those six, if you have antibodies against at least two of those six proteins, it's a positive test, okay? And we can say with 96% certainty that the test is positive due to the Lyme germ being in you and not due to another infection making antibodies that happen to attach to the Lyme antibodies, okay? So this test is 96% accurate and it will find Lyme if you have it about 80 to 85 percent of the time, okay? So the standard that we use, which is to identify and, and see if there is antibodies against at least two of the six double stars, is accurate when it's positive 96 percent of the time, and it will find it 85 percent of the time, okay? Now the Centers for Disease Control, on the other hand, on an IgM Western blot says to only look at this one, 39, and 41. The CDC method doesn't even look at these other ones, okay? Now using their method, if you have antibodies against the two of these three double stars that I just pointed out, their test is right about 100% of the time when it comes back positive, but it will only find it 60% of the time. So this standard that we use, which is to have antibodies against two of six double stars and to test if you see, you, to see if you have antibodies against 14 proteins, does a better job at finding it. And we give up just a little bit of accuracy. Again, you give up about 4% accuracy, but 96% is pretty good, okay? Now, you can have a positive IgM Western blot and or a positive IgG Western blot. So let me explain that. So in any infection, when you first get sick, it is IgM antibodies you develop. And then after you've been sick for, say, six weeks to three months, in most infections, except in Lyme, in most infections, the IgMs always go away and they get replaced by IgG antibodies. And once your immune system has made IgG antibodies, they serve as the memory of the immune system and they do not go away. And therefore, if you get an IgG test result back, the best you can say is that a person had the infection. It does not prove the germ is still in you. It just means you're still having the immune reaction and the germ could be in you, or maybe your immune system got rid of it. Okay, that's with an IgG. Now, remember I said in most infections, IgMs go away. Well, in Lyme, they don't always. And in fact, a lot of times they don't. 
And we're, we're not quite clear why that happens, but we think the reason that happens is that there is a phenomenon where the proteins that make up the covering of the Lyme germ move around. Now, in most infections, the proteins don't move around, and therefore what the covering of the germ looks like never changes. The immune system um, basically says, ah, it's the same old infection. But in Lyme, because the proteins move around, it's a phenomenon called epitope switching. It also goes by a different name called antigenic variation. But when the proteins move around, essentially what happens is what the germ looks like is constantly changing and the immune system gets tricked and it thinks it's seeing a new infection, so it keeps making the IgM antibodies, all right? Now, the significance of this is that the only way your immune system can keep making IgMs if you've been sick for about three months or more is if you have a living germ in you, flipping its proteins around, tricking the immune system, okay? so. When you get an IgM back positive, it means you have a living germ in you. Again, that is not the case with an IgG. The best you can say with an IgG is you have evidence that the germ has been in you, even though the germ could still be in you, okay? So, um, I, Tom, I, that's a long-winded response to your question, but I did want to go ahead and cover that so everyone uh, would have an understanding of what we're talking about. So thank you for that question.